Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyone is a Millionaire. I have an awesome guest today. He is a, a beast in business. He is a real estate entrepreneur. He is also a software entrepreneur. And he is just somebody that I really look up to. He's an inspiration and he's a good friend of mine, a personal close friend. And I'm just really, really happy to have him on the show. So I want to welcome Mr. Sherrod. Meta, Shrod, how the hell are you, my friend? I am really good, man. I'm really good. Every time I talk to you, I just I, I feel like my uh you know my my happiness index goes up. So <laughs> yeah, always happy to connect with you, man. So feel feel grateful to be on the show, man. I love it, man. I love it. Well, the show is very simple. It's very straightforward. It's 15, 20 minute episodes. So don't feel like we need to be, you know, going too too into depth on any of the stuff. Um you know, I, I usually inter- introduce my guests and, you know, I've known Sherrod here for, oh man, it's probably been five years, six years, maybe yeah. even at this point. Yeah, five, six years, I know. We met at a mastermind and uh, we connected right away. I'm I'm actually a customer and a client of Sherrod's through a software company, uh, but learned a lot from this guy over the years and he's just a really awesome human. So I'm just really happy to have him here. Sherrod, do you mind giving us just a really quick short bio on... Um, who you are, what you do, and you know how you essentially created a net worth over one million. Sure. So my name is Shanak Mehta. Uh, I live up in Toronto, Canada, but moving to San Diego area about a couple of months in. Uh, live up here with my wife and two kids, six-year-old boy and two-year-old daughter. And um, I'm a real estate investor. I do fix and flip right outside of Chicago in Northwest Indiana market. So. Uh, also own about 45, uh, 50 um, rental units. Uh, most of them are paid for pre and clear and then own a property management company. And then my most recent business is software company, recently. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got started in real estate back in 2010 with honestly the idea being I wanted to be a millionaire. And the first book I ever read was Millionaire Real Estate Investor. So it's pretty much like dives right into the show. You just follow right, af- right after it. How many businesses do you own? I own four businesses. So my fix and flip business, rental properties, property management, and the software company. Amazing. I love it. Sharad, thank you so much for being here today, buddy. So let's jump on in. It's very simple. We got a couple questions for you, and these um, are going to be obviously specific to you. So number one, what was your biggest financial mistake or setback from your years in, in business and your different businesses, and how did you recover from it, or what did you learn from it? My biggest setback at times have been not planning properly. You know, I'm the kind of a guy who just kind of goes in and then uh, says, hey, let's just like figure out uh, stuff, which is, you know, which has pros and cons. You know, we go fast, but at the time, you know, at times we make mistakes uh, also. Uh, my biggest setback would be buying uh, some properties in an area where we probably shouldn't have bought. We should have done a little bit more due diligence. So we ended up, you know, taking a little bit of loss on those properties. But the lesson learned was, uh, you know, it's, it's good to go fast, but, you know, just if 
I don't have the mindset to do the due diligence. I have someone on my team that I can delegate the due diligence part to. I love it, man. Great answer. I love it. Great answer. So it doesn't seem like it was too bad of a, of a financial setback. It was just a lesson. Yeah, man. Even like what we were talking about before this call, even like just living in Canada, like paying double taxation or some of this stuff. I could have avoided that if I just done a little bit of planning ahead of time, but you know, I just assumed some things and, uh, you know, paying for that, but that's, that's a lesson learned. You know, I, I focus on, you know, that, that's a personality uh, thing that I have that I like to kind of just jump right in. It's going to come with its benefit. It's going to come with this, you know, uh, cons, but as long as the benefits outweigh the, you know, the negative consequences, it's all good. So it's part of life, man. Yeah. I love it, man. Awesome answer. All right. Number two, can you share some specific strategies or tactics that you have used to increase not only your income, but your net worth? Yeah. So first of all, I, I became, uh, you know, I, I, uh, accumulated my net worth of over a million dollars in real estate. And honestly, I got started out. I wanted to be, you know, wealthy and I did some Google search and, uh, I'd read like at a few different places that 80% of real estate, uh, or, or 80 percent of million in, in the country become millionaire because of real estate. So I'm like, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. It's tangible assets, something I can control. So that's, that's how I got started in real estate. Um, for me, I would say the, the tactic or the strategy that I would follow is pick, you know, pick, pick, pick a niche that you are good at and then just be better at that than anybody else. It could be a very, very specific niche that you have. But just whatever it might be, I I'm a firm believer of like whatever you're doing, just being absolutely the best at it. You know, you don't have to do like hundred different things and try to be, you know, good at everything. But just like pick one thing, be absolutely world class at it. Uh, be better than anybody else, and there'll always always be opportunities in that. Like just with our fix and flip business, with our rental properties, with our property management. Now with the recently, my goal always says with everything we're doing, just being absolutely world-class at whatever it might be, whether it's customer support department, like every single person, if they are world-class at whatever they're doing and it just keeps like rolling up to everybody in the company and just as a company, we're going to be world-class at whatever we're doing. What an awesome answer, man. I love it. Focus is the main thing. I took Focus, yeah. yeah. Focus, That's be world-class at it. And there's so many different strategies and tactics, right? Uh, just whatever you decide to do, don't dabble. You know, go yeah. on, man. So yeah, there's that. Don't love it. Don't go into something and with the, you know, with the uh, mindset of being average. I mean, it's, it's not fun. You know, just whatever you're doing, just go in with the mindset that I'm going to be better at it than anybody else in the world. That's it. Yeah, you said be world class. I love that. I want to reiterate that, yeah. man. Be world class at that. That's amazing. Okay, number three. Did you have any mentors or role models who influenced your approach to wealth building? And if so, how? I'm not asking who these individuals were. I just want to know how they helped you or influenced you and in what ways to build wealth. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I honestly, if I could go back, one thing I would change is have mentors and coaches in my life sooner than, you know, at, at this stage in my life. Uh, but I would say like when I first started out, like books, you know, reading biographies, those, you know, like those were my mentors, like just books, um, you know, reading books and stories about more successful people, like kind of how they got to the level that they got to is, it's kind of what I looked up to, you know, starting from reading Millionaire Real Estate Investors and a few other books that I've read. I just learned from that. But but that's like one thing, if I could go back, that's one thing I'll change is start working with a coach, you know, whether it's whatever business I'm in, in real estate, you know, or software company, I would start working with a coach sooner mm-hmm. that would have cut like, you know, uh, like so many mistakes. Um, you know, yes, sure. You can always learn from your mistakes, but working with a mentor or coach, the benefit, the value that you get is you get to learn from their wisdom. You get to learn from the mistakes that they have made that would have cut like so many painful mistakes that I did, you know, um, so yeah. Uh, books, but now well, I have like a couple of yeah coaches that I work with. Yeah, and that's that's the common theme so far. This is like episode four or five here. We're we're, we're new to the, the, the to the show, right? And you know, most people say the same thing. They wish they would have started sooner. 
uh, and also they learn so much from the mistakes of their peers, their mentors, their coaches. Obviously, when we hire a coach or a mentor, we want them to teach us things, but some of the most valuable things, at least for me, is things to not do, things to oh, avoid man. Yeah. versus the things to do do, right? Right. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely, man. Rather than like going down a path that you know you kind of want to figure out, hey, if it's going to lead me to the right destination or not, if somebody's already gone down that path and, you know, like multiple times, uh, or they know other people, other students, or, you know, their mentees, then you don't have to make that mistake. You can just, you know, it, it's, it's, I feel like, man, that's such an advantage that I would have had early on in my career working with the coach. Love it, man. Amazing. All right. Number four, how do you balance risk and reward when making your investment decisions on the path or currently even to reach in 1 million net worth plus? Um, I mean, for me, you know, I'm, I'm a very conservative guy. So when I started out investing for me, the biggest, the highest priority was making sure like there was some financial stability for my family. So I didn't, I didn't feel like I had to work for money. So that's why I started out buying rental properties. And my goal was very aggressively to pay them off. So I have 50 plus units and majority of them are paid off. Uh, I think I have like old kids on like four or five of them. Uh, so that was like a big priority for me just to have that financial stability um, to pay them off. But so you had when a goal, I, when I know, which is great. Yeah, yeah, I had a goal. Like I said, like I was hyper focused on that goal. I didn't like everything else was just a distraction. Just like, again, you know, comes back to that one thing. I was like super, super focused on that one thing. I'm like, okay, this is all I want. I'm just going to be very focused, you know, go full speed ahead with this and just make it happen. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was good. Um, but yeah, now, now it's, it's to the point where, you know, of course, taking care of family comes first. Um, so once that taken care of any leftover money that I have, you know, just go ahead and invest in things like try new things, uh, and test out and see if it's gonna, you know, work out or not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, like for me, the priority was, and still, you know, it's always going to be like making sure the family's financial needs are met once that is taken care of then everything like the, the leftover money that we have uh, in the business is, hey, let's just go out and invest and uh, let's look at different projects that we have. If one project is going to give us 10% versus the other is going to give us 25%, what's the likelihood of 10% versus 25% and kind of uh, just make decisions based on that. I, mean, I love it, man, because really what I heard there was is that you had a goal, but really more so is that you had a plan and you executed the plan to yep. then achieve the goal, right? You've probably heard this before, but um, I want to say it real quick. A goal without a plan is a dream. Yep. Right? Absolutely, man. Oh, so you had a goal, but you more importantly than that, you had a plan, you stuck to it, and that plan helped you balance the the risk and the reward from those from those investments. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, that was just knowing kind of, you know, starting with the end of mind. Hey, this is where I want to be. And then you make it, okay, whatever I need to do, like decisions that you're making, does the decision align with my end goal? If it does, let's go ahead. If it doesn't, then it's a distraction. You know, uh, I mean, it's much easier said than done. You know, I feel like every day I'm struggling with those distractions, you know, just staying focused and not getting, you know, pulled into some rabbit hole of like shiny objects. Yeah. We, we all struggle with it. Yeah. I mean, once we get to the... To the millionaire mark, right? It's, yeah. it's it's probably never gonna not be a problem. It's just how to know where to focus. And you know, your words here were ultra focus, hyper focus. I think you said hyper focus. Yeah, hyper focus is that's so important. Cool. All right, number five. Looking back, this is my favorite question here. Looking back, what advice would Mister Sherrod give to Mister Younger Sherrod, his younger self, about creating and building? a net worth of 1 million plus. What would you do or say to yourself to, 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 you know, give some advice, speed it up, so on and so forth? Oh man, that's, that's a fantastic question. I would, I would go back to, you know, like figure out what you are good at. I think, I think it's like a Japanese, um, concept called like Ikakai or something. Like it's just like their, their idea of like happiness. I think it talks about 
uh, hey, what's your passion? What are you good at? What does the world need? And just kind of like, you know, draw this Venn diagram. And then there's, there's going to be something that it's, you know, it's going to meet like all, you know, it's going to check all the boxes. I'm not doing a good job of explaining that. Uh, but, you know, figure out like, hey, this is what I'm good at. And there is a need for this in the world. And if you're going to do that, like just be really, really, really good at it. I do that with the intention of being better at it than anybody else. I mean, even like you look at something as something like, hey, if you're good at like frying chicken, right? Um, I look at, you know, KFC, look at Popeye's, look at, you know, uh, Pollo Loco. I mean, these things people basically like sell fried chicken as simple as that, but then then they're world class at it, you know? Mm-hmm. If you're going to do whatever you're going to do, if there's a need for it, don't, don't do it half-heartedly, man. Don't, don't just try to be, hey, I'm just going to try to be good enough. No, I'm going to do it and I'm going to be better at it than anybody else. Every day, I'm going to take one step forward to be world class at this thing. This is my thing. I'm going to be world class at this than anybody else. Like, I'm just going to be better at this than anybody else. That's what I would do. Uh, you know, not get distracted. I mean, I, I keep this book in front of my, I read that book because of you. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I, I keep it in front of me just as a reminder that that's that's my that's my focus on man. Like just stay out of distraction, and then just if you know this is what I want to do, if I know this is what I want to do, then just be hyper focused, and then just uh, you know don't worry about anything else. Don't look at what other people are doing. What's working for them? Just you know worry about what you need to do in your life. Yeah, man, and I, I will travel it. more. And I will travel. Oh, and you would travel more too. Okay. I'll travel more. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's another thing I wish I had done more of. Travel more. Yeah. I love it, man. So what I heard here was be find something you're passionate about. Don't chase right. shiny objects. Get hyper focused and be world class at what it is you decide to do because we both know there's a million ways to make a million dollars. Maybe a billion yeah. ways. I mean, there is absolutely opportunities yeah. out there but when we're chasing shiny objects and i'm not going to act like i don't do it guys i chase them all the time but whenever i finally realize at the end of the day oh man i just wasted this whole day chasing this shiny object i need to then refocus my efforts and hyper focus on the things that matter the things that i'm passionate about and that charade is really really good at man that's that's amazing so and then also travel more why that why that one Oh man, um, I I feel like when I'm traveling with family, that just I mean that's what it's all about, right? I mean you're not like there's there has to be like you don't want to make money for the sake of making money, right? You want to make money at the end of the day. I I feel like everyone is making money to create experiences in their life. You know, for me, like traveling with family is the experience that I absolutely love. I mean, and not to say that I didn't have like we we my wife and I we travel a lot. We've been to like five continents, the then African safari and all that good stuff. But there's you're never gonna say, Hey, I traveled enough. Like, you know, I wish like I'd spent more time traveling uh with family. That's a great point. I've never spoken to an elderly person that says, I wish I would have not traveled as much. Right. I never heard that. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. Yeah, that's that's what I wish I had done more. And then I'm being more conscious about that. Like especially with kids, you know, I want to make sure. I mean, even when I look back at my life and um you know, the things that I remember about my past is, you know, spending time with family usually involved travel. You know, it, it doesn't need to be like fancy travel. It could be like, hey, just we can get get away, you know, go, sure. to go camping even right. sometimes. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. Just like those experiences. But being with back. the ones you loved, doing yeah. things with the ones you loved. And then also I think a piece of this too is, is being able to disconnect from all the stress and all the craziness oh, the world absolutely. puts in front of you. And just focus on you and your wife and your children and just be present. I love to your command. Yeah, you're never going to get to the end of the life and say, man, I wish I'd done one more to you. Man, I wish I'd got <laughs> one more customer. Right. And or even made one yeah. extra million, right? It's not exactly. even about that. Exactly. It's about it's having... Yeah. It, it, you know, one of the things that that I always you know, try to try to remind myself is, is that money just creates utility, right? Yeah. If we are depressed or sad or mad having more money doesn't necessarily fix those problems it just gives us more options 
And at the end of the day, you don't even necessarily have to have a ton of money to often do the things that you want to do to be happy. It just often gives us more options. So, man, oh, man. That is, yep, that is so true. Sherrod, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, your tactics, your strategies, your mindset, your uh, opinion of your you know role models and how they influenced you, as well as giving us advice on what you would say and tell your younger self. Do you have any parting words for us, my friend? Uh, no, man. I mean, I just I, my daily struggle is focus. Um, you know, with everything I say, that like more for me than anybody else listening to the show. It's like kind of I'm just telling myself, sure, just be focused. Be focused. Don't worry about distraction. Like, I, I, I'm not at any social media, you know, personally. Um, that's just to avoid distraction, avoid any unnecessary input in my mind. And that's, for me, it's, that's a daily struggle, man. It's just like staying focused on my path and just trusting the process and knowing, hey, as long as I do think that I need to do, it's going to lead me uh, to where I want to go. Man, I love it. And Sherrod, not only is he an awesome entrepreneur and an investor and just an amazing human, like I said in the beginning, but he has the best real estate CRM on the planet. Resimply is the name of it. Go check it out. Resimply.com. It is the best. Sherrod, thank you for being here today. Thank you, May. Thank you for your time. Signing off, guys. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We want to thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep building your wealth. Signing off.